or by Roundtable. If you have any questions during the show, please call 781-837-4900. We'd love to talk real estate. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and wherever you like to listen to podcasts at Talk Real Estate Roundtable. If you would like a one-on-one consultation with me and my team to discuss your real estate needs, you can connect with me at bostonconnect.com or 781-826-8000. Now, sit back, relax, take good notes, and let's talk real estate. And hello to all my South Shore neighbors. You are listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. My name is Melissa Wallace, and I am joined by the one and only Kristen Howlett. Hello. 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 My co-host this evening. How How are are you? you? I'm good. I'm good. I am going to call out Larry, though. (laughs) So I called into the studio this morning to give a little sneak peek of what we're going to be talking about. And probably six or seven times he called me Michelle. And I, I like, oh, hello, Michelle. I was like, um, Larry, you've known me for seven years. Why do you keep calling me Michelle? Um, Michelle on his mind. Yeah, yeah. Whoever Michelle is, good for you. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I, yeah, but he called me about six or seven times this morning. That so I was so like, funny. I didn't call him out then because it was like his show. But now that it's my show, I can say, uh, yeah, no. And Larry, pull it together. <laughs> but it was you funny. You think he's hearing now? <laughs> It was funny. Mary was sitting next to me. She was dying laughing. We, we had a good laugh this morning. We needed it. Um, but yes, I am joined live in studio by my co-host this evening, Kristen Howlett. It is Howlett. gorgeous out tonight. It is gorgeous. I know. I wish we were, I wish we could do the show outside. Do you think we could figure that out? We totally could. 100%. Okay. If we, we plant could. that little seed in Sharon's head, she probably <laughs> would, would do it. it. Although now it's the end of summer, so like we should have done we that in the do, beginning but of summer. We could do a nice fall day. I know. Yeah. yeah. Be, I mean, fall, fall is my jam. I love fall. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So you know, tonight we are sort of. Um, <laughs> you have I'm like the so smirk. <laughs> you have the smirk on your face. And if you are following us on Facebook, we are fa- um, live on Facebook. So yeah, Boston Connect that. Real Estate. Yeah. F- share it. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, so this morning when I talked to Larry as Michelle, I uh, I, I gave them a little sneak peek um, of of what we're going to be talking about tonight, and we are sort of showcasing a new segment. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're going to be showcasing a new segment. So, Kristen, you join me all the time, anyways. You're like my honorary Tuesday night co-host at this point. You should just say that you, you know. You, you I, host I'm the show all the, the time. <laughs> the forever. No, you're not a fill-in. I am. I'm a good fill-in. No, you're you're like a co-host. Okay, stop calling yourself a fill-in. Um, but this was sort of your idea, and we're rolling with it. So, I love this um, idea. although you do join me all the time, you are committing to doing at least one Tuesday night show with me every single month. And why don't you? Well, before we get into the topic, in case somebody hasn't heard you on the show before, why don't you reintroduce yourself to all of our listeners? My name is Kristen Marie Howlett. <laughs> uh, oops, my cousin Susan Butler is calling me right now. I need to decline her. Decline. Butler, I'll call you later. <laughs> um, Kristen Marie Howlett. I am a full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate. I service um, anywhere in Massachusetts. And yes, I, I serve um, sellers, buyers. Um, I'm currently looking for renters. Um, I'm trying to assist a client to help her son move into um, a rental. So, yeah, I do everything. You yeah. name it, I'll do it. Y- you name um, it, you do it. My phone number is 617-448-4896. And uh, my f- email is kristen at Boston, bostonconnect.com. <laughs> okay, yesterday. Listen. You're saying it with like a question mark, like asking me what it is. Yesterday, there was something wrong with my mouth and my tongue. I kept stuttering all day i couldn't even talk i was talking to a new client and i sounded so not professional oh my gosh I, I couldn't stop stuttering i couldn't it was nothing was flowing i don't know what my issue was it was just well let's hope days. that it doesn't carry on to the show because this is your baby i'm just gonna call it your baby to mm-hmm. everybody okay so you have this wonderful idea to come on the show at least you're committing to at least once a month once coming a month. on uh with me on tuesdays we have not figured out a name for this segment and we're calling it a segment even though we're div- we're we're uh gonna do it for the whole entire show so i feel like it's a show not a segment yeah, but like um a special edition special <gasps> edition that's it that's it 
yeah. uh, south of Boston special edition or something. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but why don't you give um, our listeners what we're going to be talking about? What, what, what is this new segment that we're going to be doing? So since I have, um, I am the self-proclaimed um, directory, <laughs> director of community liaison service outreach. And um, on the forms committee. And I'm on the forms committee. <laughs> I thought it would be fun to kind of get out and explore this beautiful community that we live in. Yeah. We're always talking about things and we talk real estate and you guys do a good job of like educating people. But I thought it would be fun to just kind of highlight the towns that we serve the most yeah it's almost like yes we sell real estate and we help people purchase but like what happens after the closing like when you're living in these towns and and i think a lot of buyers in the past couple of years because of low inventory and because of covid and everything we went through they were purchasing in towns that maybe they weren't thinking about purchasing before so they had to expand their uh sort of buying palette and decide okay yeah maybe you know this town is you know good for my budget and good for my living situation and whatever and they were able to purchase a home in that town but maybe they're not so familiar with it um so you know we, we're starting off we'll we'll say it we'll start off with bridgewater and why are we starting off with bridgewater because i live in bridgewater oh you mm-hmm. do and and it's funny i've been thinking um probably for the past week that I live in Bridgewater. Trish and Nick Flynn also, who are full-time realtors here at Boston Connect, are also Bridgewater residents. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know for me sometimes because the office is in Pembroke and I spend so much time here and we're so yeah. hyper-focused on Pembroke that sometimes I love Pembroke. I feel like it's definitely my second community, but like Bridgewater's my home. Yeah. So I, I, I want to be able to talk about as much as I love Pembroke, there's a lot of things that I feel like I don't fit we are Bridgewater is well it's not just like your life is in Bridgewater it's not just your business your business is really all over Massachusetts Mm -hmm. I mean you can sell anything anywhere in Massachusetts and you're getting Rhode Island right Mm -hmm. okay yeah I'm holding you to that yeah we're going for a broker's license and we're getting Rhode Island (laughs) (laughs) someone's gonna hold us to it um yeah we're, we're trying to expand into Rhode Island um but like I said, your life, you, you know, you personally raised your family. You're open about that on the show. So you raised your family. You've chosen to live there. When did you buy your house? We bought when Jake was six months old. So um, we built. Yeah. So we, we've been there almost 23 years. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. you have decided to live your life in Bridgewater. Mm -hmm. Um, I, and I came to Bridgewater kicking and screaming. Why? I wanted um brian literally bought the house without even saying a word <laughs> i to remember me. you telling me this a couple and, months ago <laughs> said, i bought this house and um yeah i never pictured i didn't know anything about bridgewater i didn't know anything about you know i i, I knew nothing about it mm-hmm. and i did a lot of walking when we lived in randolph we bought the house that i grew up in my dad had passed away so we ended up buying that house and we did it over and I walked everywhere and I loved being like so close to the commuter rail and like I could Mm -hmm. put Jake in the carriage and we could go up to, you know, Randolph Center and I knew we'd never, I knew we weren't going to stay and live there forever, but I thought we'd be in like Weymouth or Braintree or Milton or somewhere in that. Because it's sort of like that was familiar. Same living style in a sense. So it was far Mm -hmm. and there was nowhere to walk. There was no way. But Bridgewater turned out to be a really great place for me to raise my kids. Yeah, it was a it was a great. And I'm surprised you town. said that there's nowhere to walk because you live in a community where I feel like you could walk. We we walk, but there was no destination. Like in order for me to walk to the yeah. center of town, there was like it would take me you know three hours to probably walk up there. <laughs> and, and then walk. Brian would have we to would come and pick to, you up. <laughs> when the kids were little, we would walk to Dunkin' Donuts once in a while, mm-hmm. or like you know my kids yeah. would walk to Prisco's and. But we never really, uh, you know, in Randolph, I could walk up to CVS and get some stuff and I could yeah. go and, you know, yeah, walk around. Yeah. It was a, it was a different sort of lifestyle, yeah. but, yeah. but you don't regret moving. No, not no, at all. No, no, nope, nope. 
No. But that's the thing. Like, that's what I was saying. So, you know, you didn't, uh, Brian purchased the house <laughs> and mm-hmm. said, hey, we're going to build in Bridgewater. And you're like, where? And, you know, you weren't familiar with Bridgewater. I feel like a lot of the times, especially in the past couple of years, you know, buyers are buying in places that they might not be familiar with. So um, we are going to take the time at least once a month to sort of highlight one of these um, towns. So South Shore, South Coast, South of Boston will stay um, and sort of just highlight what what's what makes that town so great. And we're going to be highlighting think of it like a zip trip. Yeah, but I don't know if we can call it a zip trip. No, it's n- it's not. But <laughs> I think but that's I, it's kind of like the idea of the zip trip. Yeah, because I want it to be so popular that everybody's like, oh, where are they going next? Oh, where are they going next? I know. Well, we we sort of have an idea of where we want to go next month. But you know, if you are listening and you have a suggestion, or you're watching us on Facebook, you can call into the studio seven eight one eight three seven four nine zero zero or comment on our live video. Where should we go next month? But we should get into Bridgewater. So, okay. So we chose Bridgewater because that's where you live. That's mm-hmm. where you've decided to live your life with your family. Let's say I'm a Bridgewater expert. You're a Bridgewater expert. Mm-hmm. And what makes Bridgewater so great? Bridgewater is, well, you know what? It's a small town. Um, it was, it like I said, it was, it was a really nice family town. Um I, I love the quirky things about it. I love everybody. Nobody likes Bridgewater Center. I love Bridgewater Center. I like walking around Bridgewater Center. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a lot of great... It's funny because Larry mentioned Bridgewater Center this morning mm-hmm. because he was like, oh, Bridgewater is such a great town. Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, I love I love the center in Me there too. and you can walk around. And I was like, perfect, Larry. Tune in tonight. And Bridgewater's doing a lot of revitalization. They just redid the, um, you know, our town hall was redone. Mm-hmm. There's, um, I should know this... Um, there's a building across, next to the fire station that's being redone right now. So they're doing a lot of the historic buildings over. Mm-hmm. Um, it was Is that part of Bridgewater Alley. State, that, that building that's nope. next to the... No. Nope. Nope. Okay. The Old Town Hall was originally, it should be on here, the um, Bridgewater Academy, mm-hmm. um, which there is a little bit of history on that one. Yeah. Um, and it has a beautiful waterfall in the front and, you know... Um, Hold on. Where where is that located? So uh, my connection to Bridgewater. So if you're not familiar yep. where Bridgewater is, it's about what twenty five miles south of Boston. Yep. Uh, um, <clears throat> and um, I went to Bridgewater State University. So mm-hmm. I went to Florida Southern, and then I transferred to Bridgewater State. Um, and uh, although I didn't live on campus, I had an apartment in East Bridgewater. Um, I loved going like. I would I would walk from even though I drove to school like I would walk from the school to the town center yeah. to you know places I love I love living in a college town yeah and it's funny when we first moved to Bridgewater mostly because there was like traffic and I didn't want to sit in it so I was like yeah. oh, I'm just gonna walk yeah. and you know and everybody did everybody was I, walking I love when the you know some people will complain that there's a little bit more traffic and you have to stop at the stop signs and you know let well them it's the law you should stop at the yep. stop signs or but you know what they there's an energy with the kids when they're on campus like we always went to st basil's which is on bsu and yeah. there there really is an energy with the kids there that is i love that yeah but when we first moved to bridgewater um i knew somebody that worked at bsu and her husband was an author and he wrote he wrote a kind of like an autobiography and in it he said Bridgewater is Bridgewater is not a college town. It's a town with a college. I love that. Well, it can be a little bit. But no, I don't. You feel don't love like, it. I don't feel like Bridgewater embraced the college. Like I feel okay. like you know what I mean. Like we we. I feel like we should have I a guess, Starbucks. So, okay, and, so and I we have restoration coffee. Well, and, yeah, I know yeah. we're gonna get into that. So I, I think that this is a great dynamic right here because you're a Bridgewater resident and I was a college student in Bridgewater. So, so did you feel accepted by the? But so uh, did I feel accepted by the residents? I when I was a student, I didn't really notice or um, pay attention to if you lived in Bridgewater or not. Like I was living in East Bridgewater, commuting just one town over. um, And, you know, I met my best friend, Jess. She grew up in Bridgewater. Um, Her mom is actually a bartender at Barrett's in Bridgewater. Mm -hmm. Um, So shout out to Ginny. You know, Ginny, right? Um, So 
you know, that was sort of my connection. And so, but I always just felt, I, I worked in a restaurant in East Bridgewater. A lot of Bridgewater residents would come in and they like just knew me and I sort of didn't feel the disconnect. But do you think other people do? I don't know. I think that, okay, here's another. I'm gonna, I'm getting off track. <laughs> This is another, once my kids started getting older, what I also realized, and I thought that this said a lot for the community, is people chose, they lived in Bridgewater, they grew up in Bridgewater, mm -hmm. they may have moved, their lives took them other places, mm -hmm. but when it came to settle down, they, they came back. They came back. And yeah. We know so many people. Yeah. And I thought that says well, a lot Well, my friend, my friend Jess, again, she grew up in Bridgewater and she said the same thing. Yeah. So now she um, is raising her family in East Bridgewater, um, but her mom still lives in Bridgewater. Her sister lives in Bridgewater. Like, and she just knows so many people who either stayed or yeah. left and came back. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, I feel like that says a lot. I think that says speaks volumes. And there's so much to do mm -hmm. too. And, and why don't we get into what you can do there? So we'll highlight some so of the businesses. So let's talk a little bit about the history too mm -hmm. of Bridgewater, mm -hmm. which, um, Melissa was right. It is a town located, it's in Plymouth County. Um, as of the two, 2020 U.S. Census, the population was 28,633. Mm. That's pretty big. Yeah, right? I, I don't really know. <laughs> so in 1970, the year I was born, it was 12,911. Oh, okay. So um, it is located approximately 25 miles south of Boston and 35 miles east of Providence. Mm -hmm. It was established as part of Duxbury in 1645. Um Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. It was placed in Plymouth County. Um, so a couple of fun things about Bridgewater is a lot of people talk about the Bridgewater Triangle. Yeah, I, what is that? Oh, well, I don't know. If, are we supposed well, to say Supernatural. We, yeah. So it's like... There's a podcast even... on um, Apple Podcasts. There's oh, I'm sure Mary has it. listened to yeah. it. Yeah. Um, it's very interesting. Um, my kids always tease me because one night we were driving home, so there... So, one of the things that one of the I don't know urban legends, urban <laughs> yes. myths, is that there are things called puck wedgies that are these little creatures that almost look like what? Yeah, Google it. Dead serious. Yeah, it's it's it's. And I told my kids one night <laughs> we were on our way home Google from that. the pool club, and it was dark, and I swore I saw a puck wedgie. What is it? Just like a little creature? Yeah, like yeah. a troll. I'll pull it up on my phone. No, it's like I don't want to see it. Yeah, no, they're cute. They're cute, and they're not. But and they're people not real. have said that they've interacted with them. Oh, in the triangle, in the Bridgewater Triangle. Oh, look. well, Bridgewater Triangle is like it's. There's portions of East Bridgewater, West Bridgewater, and Bridgewater. Mm -hmm. um, but in particular, Bridgewater. <laughs> <laughs> there is a documentary, and somebody says that somebody they, one them? night, yeah, they they oh. had an encounter with a puck wedgie. Well, I'll have to check that out then, mm -hmm. <laughs> take, or take your word for it, because I don't know if I want to see it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, okay, so the, I don't really know much about the Bridgewater Triangle, but I have heard about it. Like I've I've heard little bits and Just pieces like about it, like yeah, stuff. supernatural stuff that goes on. But you know, and I do believe in all that stuff. <laughs> but I think it happens everywhere. I think it happens all around you. So, like you said, um, Bridgewater also houses. Bridgewater State University. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm I wish a graduate. We had more, um, um, more facts on Bridgewater State. What's um, Bridgewater State known for? It's um, element um, education. Edu yeah, it's like education a, a, yeah. and business. Like well, business I went school? so I was part of the business school. Oh, criminal yeah, justice, nursing. It's a big criminal justice. I think they too. have a nursing program. I think at one point it was a big uh, nursing program. Yeah, but um, education, criminal justice. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I was part of the business program. Um, so business and marketing finance, um, was my realm. Um, but you know, you just like any other college, like, you know, you're pretty much only interacting with the people who have the same major as you, um, in Bridgewater state it was so big, you know, I went to Florida Southern for my first two years and I think there was like less than 3000 students in the entire school. And then I went to Bridgewater State and I was like, there's probably 3,000 students with like the same class as me. Yeah. <laughs> no, not really, but I, like the same major or whatever. Um, but yeah, once you, once I like started going there, like pretty much I would have the same, you'd start to see the same faces over and over again. Um, and I still keep in touch with some. I mean, I graduated in 2014, 13, what, mm -hmm. how old am I? 10 years ago. Um, so yeah. 
And I didn't realize that until I just said that. And I was like, oh, oh I graduated 10 years. Yeah, I'm getting old. Well, also, um, living in Bridgewater, as a resident of Bridgewater, you, we got a lot of perks from students at the college, mm. like especially when the kids were little. There were kids that were um, students that were in, you know, some sort of an education program and they would do programs at the library. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do know that. And also being a student and I, I hope that they still do this because this was really beneficial for me. Um, we would have like, um, and I don't know even the, the term, it's just like money on your card, like your oh, yeah. school card. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of the local businesses yeah, took the school card. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that was super helpful for me because I, I would be on campus. I think it's and, the Bridgewater Connect card or something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah something like that. Um, and I'm sure I still have mine somewhere in a box. Um, but, you know, I could go to CVS. I could go to the coffee shop. I could go to the gas station and use my card you know, well, we're going to talk about this, but um, Brian was so upset the other night because he went to Fiesta's. He's obsessed with Fiesta's has a little like a remote location yeah. now on Bridgewater. Yeah, it's um behind Lucky Star gas station and it's kind of like a Chipotle, but even better because it's authentic because it's fiesta but he was out of his mind the other night because he went there and all the college kids were back and it was so long the line was so oh long. I, I wonder if they take the card oh i'm sure they. oh yeah do. so i know we're talking about bridgewater but in east bridgewater there's fiestas and we love to frequent there i was just there the other night with my friend dave and like we order the same exact thing every single time we order the same margarita every single time it's just always so good We've we've had a few too many drinks there, you and I, and had, you and know, a couple other people. Every time I go there, it's like <laughs> oh God. Yes. we they love it. We 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 love it. So when you told me that they were opening up like a to go place in Bridgewater, I was like, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. that I, I'm Across gonna go the there all the time from CVS where Bogarts used to be. Yeah, um, they just redid that all over, and actually, it's a local family, um, two local families that. Um, actually invested in it and originally the talk was that that restaurant was going to be a Mexican restaurant yeah um, but we don't know now because now there's actually two other there's another one like right down the street or maybe it's a Brazilian place I can't remember oh is that in the old friendlies um, across from friendlies oh, okay. yeah 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 so I don't know where where everyone's so anxious to see they did some apartments up top like some really nice apartments mm. um, when Bogarts was there Bogarts had fabulous pizza Oh. Really good pizza. I only went there once, um, and that was to pick yeah. someone up who had had too much to drink. Wait, you never went to Bogarts? <laughs> no, I went to Bo yeah, I went to Bogarts once when I. So I think. Wait, I it, thought that was a big BSU place. Like yeah, even I know. Before Bogarts, but was I but I graduated in 2014, and it um, I, it closed shortly after. I feel like. No? Oh, maybe. Yeah. And um, then it reopened. So, yeah. But I, um, yeah, I had only gone there once um, and I was literally in my pajamas, oh, <laughs> not well, thinking I was going to get out of my car, but then I had to go and find somebody. So I was being the responsible one in the middle of Bogart's. Well, like, when Ava was, I had already gotten that, that partying out of my system. So when Ava was little, um, she was doing Girl Scouts and sometimes we would drop the girls off at Girl Scouts and... So go we to had Bogart? to stay, and then we would go to Bogarts and have drinks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know, we're you keeping it what real. You got to do. You got to do. You got to. I'm sure. Um, but when you just said apartments over there, so uh, Bridgewater is a really great place to own an investment property. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So although I did rent as a as a student in at Bridgewater State, I rented in East Bridgewater just because. Um, and I think they still do this too. Bridgewater State has um, a website that um, local homeowners or um, landlords can go through and they'll like sort of, um, I, I don't know, like yeah. pre-check you, yep. pre-check yep. you. And you can, there's like this website where you can go and find an apartment yep. that are specifically looking for students of Bridgewater State. So yep. that was super helpful for me because I was coming from Florida. I mean, I obviously I grew up in Weymouth, grew up in Massachusetts. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with the area, but coming from another school. Yeah. I was like, I don't know where I'm going to live. Well, like, it's funny that you say that because I reached out when I had, I had one, um, I had a listing on South Street and then one on Library Place. And both times, anything up in the center, I think college. I yeah. think of a professor yeah, me too. or someone who yeah. might, you know. And um, so I reached out to them twice to see if they had any, um, not so much the students' housing, yeah. but more something that they could, maybe they do have somebody who's, who's you know, faculty who's just moving here. I'm who sure, needs to purchase yeah. something. So 
Um, I did show Library Place. Um, ironically, it was a librarian who was um, coming to Bridgewater State. Nice to work there. But anyways. that was a that was a beautiful listing that you had. Oh, beautiful. Um, but yeah, I, I, and I don't even know if it's on our list. But I, Bridgewater is a really great town to purchase a an investment property if you're oh, thinking yeah. to, yeah. Um, you know, rent rent to a college student. And I know it can be scary. I know it, but take it from me personally. Like I was a very responsible renter. You know, I ended mm-hmm. up staying in my apartment two years after I had even graduated. I think I ended up being there for four years. Um, you know, so and they kept increasing the rent, increasing the rent, except for mine. You know, because I they were like, "We'll we'll take care of you're you. You've been taking you. care of me." Yeah. So, um, you know, so that was that was super helpful. Again, so if you if you do invest in a property that you want to rent out, reach out to the college because yeah. there is that um, website. But I'm sorry, I got off topic. So we were talking about dropping our I kids love, off. <laughs> what I what the, um some of the things that I love about living in Bridgewater is um, I like its proximity. What, what I didn't like when we first moved there, I ended up loving because of course now everything changes. I love how close we are. We can hop on 44 and be in Plymouth in 20, 25 minutes. Yeah. Um, I love being close to Cape Cod. So you can just hop on 495. I love being able to go to the beach and be there in less than 30 minutes. Um, I love also that there's a commuter rail. So my kids, even when they were younger, like seventh and eighth grade, I encourage them. I'm like, hey, you want to get out of here? Learn how to take the train. I would take them on the train. We would take the commuter rail. Mm-hmm. They'd learn. One time, Ava was like, all right, I'm, I'm ready to do it by myself. I said, okay. And then we got lost, so she couldn't do it. Oh. But my kids were always <laughs> the kids that like, I trust it. I'm like, if you want it in high school, if you want to get out of here, you can take the commuter rail, go into Boston and come home. Mm-hmm. But you're going to do it yourself. Like, I'd, I'd rather you take the train than yeah. drive. Yeah. Um. So I like that you can you can commute. It's a good commuter town. Yeah, I loved Bridgewater State. Um, we also house Bridgewater State Hospital, mm-hmm. which is the prison. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, also, oh, sorry, another phone call. Yeah. Um, uh, the other thing I love about it is Lake Nipponicket. We're big kayakers. Yeah, and you are. We love, Brian and I will go to the Nip and it's easy. There's like a little boat ramp. And that's an area that I didn't know about when we moved to Bridgewater. And had I known, I probably would have waited and tried to find something close to the nip. Mm-hmm. Um, my friend Katie Saro, um, her son is Owen's age. He just graduated. He's a year older, actually. But she always posts her morning walks with her dog in the nip. And it's just, it's like, how could you be in a bad mood when you wake up to that? Yeah. Yeah. Just this little body <clears throat> exactly. of water, you know, that has these amazing sunrises and sunsets and. Well, that sounds perfect. How do, yeah. how do you sign up for that? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, I know you want to highlight some of the local businesses. So where do you want to start with? I think we should talk about the, um, what's, what's available right now. So the oh. Bridgewater Real Estate Market. Okay, we can do that instead. Yeah. And then we can talk about, yeah, the highlights. Okay. Um, so right now there are 28 active listings in Bridgewater. Two are condos. Single family, 28 single family, two condos. There are 24 homes, single family homes under agreement, five condos under agreement. So under agreement, meaning that they have an accepted offer on exactly. it. Exactly. Um, single family and condo homes sold in 2023, so far 161. In 2022, 231. Yeah. So obviously a lot more last year. Single family and condo homes sold in the month of August 23. Single family condo homes sold in the month of September, so far 13. Hmm. So we wanted to highlight a couple of listings, active listings. Yes. Okay. So, oh, I'll do this one. Yep. Um, so a Jess Page, who is a full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate, has a listing. I actually listing. These MLS sheets. I'm going to grab Oh, them. good. Um, she has a listing at 20 Partridge Trail in Bridgewater. That is four bedrooms, three baths. It is on the market for six twenty-five. dollars um, Again, Jess Page, she is a full-time realtor here at Boston Connect Real Estate. You have the MLS sheet for it um but if you can you everybody can go to bostonconnect.com and find the information out um and we can even give her a little uh i I can bring up her phone number um but again 20 partridge trail in bridgewater 625 um it's a colonial two-car garage i mean this is cute yeah it's a great one i thought i had buyers for it and jess and i talked about it It has like an expansive garage yeah um i think that the the current owner has a had a golf simulator in there 
Um, but yeah, Partridge Trail is a great neighborhood. It's it's close to East Bridgewater. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think of it like more on like the ha going on the way to Halifax. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a great it's a great little neighborhood. Nice. Um, one eighty six Crescent Street. That's three beds, two baths. It's on the market for four seventy nine nine. It's not yeah. a Boston Connect listing, but we could certainly show it. Of course. Um, one eighty eight Hayward Street. Two bed, one bath. That's on for four seventy nine nine. And one thousand High Street. Three beds, two baths. Two, uh, that's on for five forty nine nine. Yeah, that's a that's a really cute one too. The, so the last three are ranches, and mm. this one... Um, on Which everybody wants a ranch right now. Everyone. Yeah, yeah me Double too. demographic, right? Yeah. 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 You've got the first-time homebuyers, and you have the right-sizers. Everybody wants that primary bedroom with no stairs, so mm. that's a good one. Mm. Um, yeah, so those are some. Those are four great listings that are currently available in the wonderful town of Bridgewater. Mm. And you um, can show them, right? Sure can. Okay, and how do people get in touch with you? They call me. And 617-448-4896. One more time. 617-448-4896. Um, yeah. So, I mean, and, and you can see anything, really. I mean, those are the four. But if you, but even if you're thinking about selling, you live in Bridgewater, you're thinking about selling, even though you love Bridgewater so much, you can give Kristen a call as well. Um, and you can find all of her contact information on bostonconnect.com. And yeah, you can find these great, listings, too. Um, we have Cochise Estates in West Bridgewater, mm -hmm. um, but the same builder, Stonebridge Homes, is also building in Duxboro in a great um, community up, brand new construction. Yeah. Off yep. of um, Curve Street in Bridgewater. Yeah. Um, all right. Are you ready to move on to the, the, the I, I feel like this was the, this was the highlight for you is yeah. highlighting some of these businesses. So, um, what are, what are, what are some of your favorite businesses being a Bridgewater resident? What are they? Um, I love Restoration Coffee. I do too. I love a page. You know why I love them? Because they have vegan butter. Yeah. <laughs> I can't have dairy. Yeah. So I love it. I'll, I'll go in there and get an iced coffee with soy milk and I'll get a bagel with I vegan love butter. Restoration. <laughs> Even before it was Restoration, it was Better Bean and that was pretty cool too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Restoration is one of my favorites. Um, the Juice Mill right down the street. So this is all in Bridgewater Center. Um, we have the little rotary right there. In the middle of the rotary in the winter time, they do um, Christmas on the Common, mm -hmm. um, which is really fun. The kids all used to do that when they were little. They have the um, Bridgewater Business. Um, the Better Business. It's um, it Bridgewater Business Association. Mm. Um, but yeah, everything's right in that little um, town common, which is super cute. And um, right across from CBS, where we were talking, right next to Bogarts, is a new place called Boundless Bean. And they is that a are coffee? Known, yeah, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. assuming that's a coffee shop too. And they are known for their cinnamon buns. Oh, mm -hmm. I love a good I, cinnamon. When bun. I went, they were out of the cinnamon buns. No. Yes. Yes. But that's well, we'll have to make a special trip down yep. there. Yep, that's a great one. Um, and then Fiesta's takeout, oh, which we of course. said, and you got to go there and get a delicious, a burrito bowl. Yeah. Do they only do like bowls? No, nope. you, you can get, get like burritos. A... Mm. Yep. Yep. You can get mostly anything. Ah, I got, um, street corn up. dip. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. I need it. It's a limited menu. Yeah. Well, but, I would imagine it's just yeah. a takeout area. Yep. Um, but if you, you can experience the full Fiesta experience going to yeah. East well, Bridgewater. I don't think they serve margaritas there. No, I'm saying go to go to the what East Bridgewater yeah. location. Yeah. For the full for the full fiesta. Yeah. <laughs> um <clears throat> Black okay. Cat Brew Works is a brewery uh right off of one oh four as soon as you come in like near Home Depot. Mm -hmm. Um that's a great place. Everybody loves it there. I have not been there. I want to oh, try it. It's it's super super cute. And in the summertime and into the fall, they have um, food trucks. Mm. So you should go on their fa Facebook I page. I wonder if you could do like a little event there. Um, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. But a lot of people will frequent it depending on who the um, food truck is. Yeah, everybody loves their food trucks. Oh. Yeah, I love a good food truck. Mary had food trucks at her wedding. Yeah. <laughs> um, Prisco's Market, what's that? You, you've never been to Prisco's? No. Oh, my God. So Steve Prisco is, um, he owns, he still owns Steve's Lawn Care. Um, so he is a huge Bridgewater. He's, I, I don't I don't think he's a, originally from Bridgewater, but he raised his family in Bridgewater, does a ton for the town, and he opened Prisco's 
years ago. I, I, I wish I knew when he opened, mm -hmm. like over 10 years ago. Yeah. And it's like a feel good. You go in, there's like a lot of nostalgic, like penny candy oh, and I love all sorts of stuff. And it's morphed into, and it used to be, um, he would sell some landscaping stuff there and you could go get, it was a nursery, but now he has mini golf, batting cages, ice cream, country creamery out front. He has, um, they have the ice cream place. It's just, it's like Disneyland in Bridgewater. <laughs> I think we need to go. And his wife, I told you Nancy, that we have to spend like a whole entire day yeah. in these towns. I mean, you live there, so this it was very sort of like a no-brainer, um, you know, all, all these businesses. But like the next town, we need to like hang out for the entire day. I want to well, see. The next, um, Steve's, Steve, Steve's wife, Nancy, makes a mean meatball sub. And they started making pizza, and their pizza is phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Well, so um, I know Sharon and Mary on closing day, they they buy their buyers, um, you know, pizza and, and soda, water, whatever, went up on their moving day. And I always try to find somebody who I know, like who lives in the town that they have just purchased in so I can ask them, hey, where, where's your favorite pizza from or whatever. So I have to put that on the list for Bridgewater. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And then Peterson's Farm, we buy our we buy our Christmas tree there every. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I'm sorry. Peterson's Farm is the small one that is my favorite. That is right near the school. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I go. I literally was just there the other night because I needed one tomato. Um, so Mrs. Peterson, I have her um, tomato sauce recipe. She's the <laughs> cutest thing ever. Um, it's a small little. I know he has other. He does um like farmers markets in I think Middleborough, mm -hmm. but this is like the OG yeah. little farm stand. Cute. Um, Hanson Farm. What? The ice cream place. Sharon saying the ice cream place. Hanson Farm. Hanson Farm. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. So Hanson Farm is where I get my Christmas tree every year. Mm -hmm. Um. It's a it's a working farm. Um. And right next door is um. Where is that located? Because I feel like 104. I... 104. Like if you're going into, uh, if you get off 104 where um, yeah. Home Depot is. Okay. Keep going yeah. straight. That's it's exactly where I thought it was. Yeah. yeah. It's, and I forget, it's called, um, it's dairy. Sugar Hill Dairy mm. is the ice cream place. Wow. Um, you are an expert in Bridgewater. And then my absolute favorite, favorite, <laughs> favorite is Chic Boutique Consignments, which is literally right off um, Route 104. As soon as you get off the exit, it's in between. Um, there's a hair salon and a liquor store in D'Angelo's. And Chic oh, perfect. Boutique you can hit them all up. <laughs> you yeah. can hit them all up. Like get your hair done. Yeah. Do a little shopping. My grab a bottle Ashley. of wine and go home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she has all. She. It's an upscale resale boutique that I used to work at one day a week and spend all my money. And yeah. Just had so much fun. It's a great place to check out and. Um, well, you did um, an event there for I did, your clients. And I'm doing another. Oh, you mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. Can you give a little sneak peek? Um, same idea. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, nobody listening knows what the, the idea kids. was. Oh, um, sip and shop. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a sip and shop. Yeah. After the kids go back to school, like September, I think I'm going to try for October. I think October would be great too, because like people get like seasonal depression. <laughs> you yeah. know, they need to get out of the house. Yeah. They need to like Especially do when things. Especially when you do that yeah. daylight savings time. They need to do things. And I think um, having a little Prosecco and going oh, shopping. Yes. Which I I did attend your event uh, last year. Summer. It was summertime. Yeah, last summer. Hot. Yeah, it was hot. Mm -hmm. But we were inside, so it didn't matter. Yeah. But I, I did um, attend your, your little event over there at Chic Boutique, and I definitely went shopping. Yeah. I had a couple drinks, and I went shopping. Yeah, she's got some <laughs> great, great stuff. Um, yeah, we, I, I loved it there. I want to go back. I've only been there once, but I, 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 do, I do love it. And well, I know you, can you shop online, too. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, that's the, that's the other thing. You have sent me things being like, oh, do you like this? Mm -hmm. And I say, yes, but my bank account yeah, is saying no. Because you know why? Because I'm buying a house. Or at least I'm trying. <laughs> um, all right, any other uh, so businesses you want to highlight? Old we only Scot have about five minutes left. Yep, Old Scotland Lynx, okay. um, golf course. Oh, um, you can golf? Great. Drop drop somebody off to go golfing, and then oh, you yeah. can go shopping yourself. Perfect. My boys back. have golfed at Old Scotland Links since I want to learn how to golf. So if anybody out there is listening and would love to teach me, I'm a 32-year-old woman who you would like to lessons. add a hobby. I know, but I would love to like have it be a little bit more personable. Yeah. <laughs> 
Maybe someone will get you that for your birthday. Oh, maybe. Golf lessons. I love it. Um, All right. Uh, Old Cotland Links. Anything Mm -hmm. else? Bridgewater Center. Honey. Brian and I take Honey up to Carver's Pond all the time. We walk the pond. It's another um, just a great little. I don't don't think it's like maybe two miles, but it's a nice little. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I would go up there by myself with the dog and just yeah. kind of walk around, and it's a great place. And um, and then, last but not least, mm. my absolute favorite part of living in Bridgewater. Yeah, Fourth of July. And why is that? Because they have a fabulous. People come from all over for the fireworks, and they do. So Bridgewater State, although I'd have to check this, Bridgewater. They, so Bridgewater has a parade. And then you could go down to in front of what's the big building at Bridgewater State that has like the um, grass in the front where we did um, autumn graduation. Fest. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, my God. I forget the name. of it, But that's where they do graduation. So in front of there where they do Autumn Fest, they would do like a Fourth of July um, type of thing. And there would hmm. be face painting and like you could buy food and yeah. all sorts of stuff. Like a little fair. Yep. And then you could spend the whole day. And then they do um, fireworks on Legion Field. And people come from everywhere because the fireworks are awesome really it's all funded volunteers start every year the day after the fireworks and they raise money and it is an awesome 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 time yeah and we did autumn fest a couple years ago you and i did um it was probably like your first or second year here um we represented boston connect real estate um and we had our little little booth and was it jake that helped us like put our little tent owen Owen helped us put our little tent up and um yeah i mean we we had a really great time we just got to mingle i mean you know everybody pretty much everywhere we go but um we were able to not only represent our company boston connect real estate but also mingle with some of the residents and everybody who was coming to the autumn fest so and we got to eat some great food too this year the Flynn's and I um, we started talking about it last year but I think once um, the winter slumbers over we want to do a community cleanup day in Bridgewater so yeah I'm gonna try to do that yeah oh well you'll have to let all, all of our listeners know we'll, we'll probably have to do another like bridge maybe Bridgewater's Mm-hmm. in a couple months when we're doing all these community things. Um, but we only have a couple minutes left, so I want to make sure that we wrap up this with our final thoughts and you give your contact information one more time to all of our listeners. So any other things that you feel like people should know about your wonderful town of Bridgewater? I think we covered everything. Okay. It's a great little town <laughs> if you're thinking of somewhere. Oh, um, it's a regional school district. There, mm. um, It's bridgewater Raynham Regional School District. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, Bridgewater is really a fantastic town. Um, whether you are the library place that I just sold, I sold it to a couple that was newly married that just wanted to like walk around everywhere and wanted to be in the thick of like the center of Bridgewater. And so it just, I feel like it just appeals to everybody. Yeah, I, it, it really is a great town. And I know that you love it because you've been there for 20 plus years um, or 20 years. And, in, in, you know, I know so many people who are either from that town or surrounding Wait, towns. I just, and just thought, love it. I but. completely forgot the, the one thing, restaurant that we were going to talk about, we didn't even talk about restaurant, was Crispy's. Oh, I've actually Wait, never forgot. eaten there. Oh my gosh, Crispy's is so good. And we completely, that was like on the top of my list, but we got... We got sidetracked. Oh, well. Yeah, you got to go see Laura at Crispy's. She makes a mean drink. She makes a really good Aperol spritz. Oh, and, add it to the list. Yep, the chicken Crispino is out of this world, and you just, you got to go. Mm. How can people get in touch with you if they want to move into Bridgewater or they want to know more about Bridgewater? You can email me at Kristen at bostonconnect.com. You can come into 19 Mattachusett Street. Um, I'm usually here all the time. We can sit down and chat. Talk about Bridgewater. <laughs> talk about Real Housewives. Talk about, talk about anything. Oh yeah, we can talk about my mom. My mother's going off about the Real Housewives oh, right now. Oh, there's some good stuff. There's going some on. good stuff going on. So um, if you want to talk about that, you can call us six one seven four four eight four eight nine six. Feel free to yeah. call me. And you can go to bostonconnect.com, find all of our contact information there. You can go to Talk Real Estate Roundtable to listen to any of our past shows. Or you can type in Talk Real Estate Roundtable to your podcast app. Thank you so much, Kristen. Thank and you. and we, we have to do um, like a contest or something. We want to name this segment. Yeah, stay so t- stay tuned to what stay where tuned. our next. Yeah, our we don't know what we're minutes. calling it yet, but we're having a good time. So we hope that you enjoyed it. Again, you're listening to Talk Real Estate Roundtable. I will be back on Saturday live with Sharon McNamara. Thank you.
Thank you.